Extensive research that I just conducted a few minutes ago with the crew here is revealed that wireless or Wi-Fi consistently ranks high on two different lists. Things we expect all the time and things we complain about the most. Cisco DNA Center has finally brought intent-based networking to both wired and wireless, seamlessly treating the entire network as one big virtual switch. And now, with DNA Center rolling out assurance, what does this mean for wireless networking? As it turns out, a lot. Wireless expert Paul and I will cover remediation, wireless troubleshooting you will actually look forward to, and many other tools that make all aspects of managing, monitoring, and troubleshooting so much easier. We're going to show you exactly what assurance means for wireless as part of an intent-based network. Wireless expert Kathy joins Rob right now. So DNA Center's assurance speaks of a level of confidence when it comes to the entire network. And Kathy, it's so good to have you here with TechWise. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, about when we talk about assurance with wireless specifically, you're the product manager in yes. this group. Um, how do we begin to speak of, what do we mean by assurance for wireless in this context? Yeah, sure. So on one hand, wireless is just an access to the network. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, actually, wireless is the most demanding, unpredictable, and it's part of the large co-dependent chains of the services. So wireless actually tends to be the one that get the most plan even though the truth might be different. Right. Yeah, because yeah, you think of a wired environment, of course, everything is much more predictable. Your physical layer mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is usually pretty easy to troubleshoot from that perspective. But wireless can have things that come and go, it seems like, really quickly. Exactly. Um, you guys had mapped out these uh, five phases that you mm -hmm. were calling, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, correlated insights. Um, can you walk me through kind of what the, what's the thinking behind correlated insights and why these phases? What's the thought there? Sure. So when we look at the entire experience of the client, we want to look at it from end to end. So that's why we map it out into five phases. So in order to have a successful experience in the network, the five phases need to be operating very well to okay. make sure the success. And if you look at the five phases, the list under each of them represent insight. So what is insight? Insight is actually a very polite word for issue. issue. <laughs> it means that if issue happen, it will have degradation of its own category. Okay. So I give you examples. So for example, if you have association failures that will impact your client onboarding experience. Okay. If you have a slow roaming or you have sticky clients, so that will impact your client connected experience. And we check that all the way through application performance experience as well. Right. So all five phases, all of them are critical and it's co-dependent on each other. That's interesting, right, because it's not about, hey, we, if one goes away, they all could be precursors to something mm -hmm. bigger happening. And mm -hmm. so this becomes, and by correlated insights, is the fact that they work together to hopefully let us get on top of a, a result before it affects clients or, or they exactly. begin dropping or complaining or, yeah. or whatever it may be. So there were three things that I kind of thought were, were very interesting that you guys have done differently mm -hmm. uh, that really play into this notion of assurance and as I will say confidence that this level of assurance brings since we're using assurance as somewhat of a product name mm -hmm. uh, within this area but I like the connotation as well. Uh, the first of those three is this notion of we are now pushing um, communication doing a kind of a push versus a pull. Okay. Uh, can you explain that SNMP versus uh, uh, what is streaming that? Telemetry. Streaming, thank you. Yeah. So streaming telemetry. That's yep. yep, sure. So actually for the first time in the history, we streaming telemetry data directly from the controller in the AOS 8.5. And I can tell you why this is the game changer. Please tell me why. Right. So comparing <laughs> the telemetry data and SNMP, the main difference is that uh, telemetry data is the push methods, okay. where SNMP is the pull method, right? And we have three benefits. Number one is that it have a lot low overhead when we are pushing data directly from the controller. Okay. Uh, the reason number two or the benefit number two is that we can optimize the data when we send, so we can optimize it in terms of KPIs or event. And lastly, and to me, this is the most important one, and it's how it changed the entire industry, is that we send data a lot faster. Right. So right now we can detect the issue in the order of seconds, mm -hmm. whereas if you compare with the traditional SNMP data, the issue is detected five minutes ago, so right. it's not really helping the users. Excellent. Okay, so we get this information faster so that reactions can happen faster, so we get on top of stuff cool. faster. It's yeah. fed by these correlated insights exactly. as well, I would imagine. Okay, so that streaming telemetry. The other thing was this notion, and this was really big, is our partnership with Apple, which we've mm -hmm. talked about on the show mm -hmm. here before, 
and we talk about analytics now, though, we yep. are getting more information from Apple devices when they're on a Cisco network that we yep. haven't had. What are we What are we doing now? Yeah, this is something that all of my customer is excited about. Yeah. So this is very very unique about iPhones and iPads that running in iOS 11 on Cisco network. So for the first time that we get access to the data of the real actual user experience. So the device send us the actual user experience. And okay. this is something new with Cisco and that's why we call it Cisco Wi-Fi Analytics for iOS. So there are three things that the Apple device sent us today that okay. is new. So number one is that it sent us the BSSID, it sent us the SSI. So entirely everything is about the insight how the client view how about it the network. Receives its exactly. Connection. Okay. So we have the infrastructure view about client, but now we know that how the client view about the network. So that is something yeah, new. Yeah, we never get that because standards yeah. don't allow us to do that. We don't have a level of trust. We're not going to trust clients to tell us that. Exactly. But, but we do with Apple. Yeah. Okay. And then the second information that we get is about the hardware models and the software versions that is running. With that information, we can do a lot of like correlations and insight about the hardware model or mm -hmm. the software versions. And lastly, and to me, that is also the most important one, is that the reasons why the client disconnect. So it okay. informs us why it disconnect, and we know what is the cause for that. Um, for example, it could be the um, services uh, root cause, for example, that could be AAA section timeout, or that could be validation failures, or it might be just the user actions like I turn off my iPhone or like I disable the Wi-Fi, so that's why it disconnects. So now the infrastructure actually know the reasons why the user disconnect. I like that. And so obviously we're also getting neighbor list from the client perspective so that now we're not dependent on the APs telling us this is where we think you should be roaming. Yep. We're taking into account this all comes together through DNA Center now so that we can yep. see this coming together. Now speaking from an analytics perspective, I can't help but notice you've got what is it you have in front of you? Sure. So this is the one that we launched together with the DNA Center. Okay. So this is the Cisco Active Sensor. So actually it's very light and small. You can see like it's like a That's palm of, yeah. of my palm. And then you actually can carry it and then you can change it to AC power. So then you can plug it anywhere. So if I'm and having trouble, I literally, so if I don't have an Apple device, it's giving me perspective from the client. Yep and I'm troubleshooting a specific location or a dead spot, I get the client perspective plugging this in an AC in a wall or at a computer level. Exactly, so you plug it at a floor level nice. so that it okay. very close to your real client experience. And actually many of our APs can become a sensor as well. And it, it can be done automatically, you don't need to do it. The network will do it for you when it needs to do, or you can schedule it to do it for That's you. That's right, certain APs actually will do flexible radio sensing, I think, is that correct? Yeah. And then they will convert, and so that one's at the ceiling level as opposed to this at the client level. Exactly. But all this again comes together in a kind of a simplified delivery through DNA Center so mm -hmm. that we can hopefully troubleshoot either very quickly or much more quickly than we could before, or ideally prevent things before users even become aware of them. Correct. Sure. Yeah, that's correct. Final point, what do we need to remember here? Summarization of what's most important? Yeah, sure. So wireless has been dramatically improved in three levels. So level in number one is detection. So mm -hmm. right now we can leverage the entire network sensor to detect the issue for users or so have them to do faster troubleshooting. Level number two is prevention. So because of the sensor proactive monitoring, we can prevent those issues happen for the users. And lastly, in terms of suggested remediation, so we can have to suggest the action for users to fix the issue if it happened. Perfect, and I think that's actually Lauren's favorite. So thank you, Kathy, very much. It's time to go over to the lab where Lauren's gonna break this down with us. I believe she has a special guest with us to see what this looks like. Let's do that now. You know, what I love about Assurance is that it lets us not only take the wired network, but the wireless network and gather all those analytics. And here to tell us more about that is Paul. Thanks, Lauren. So Assurance has so much amazing information on wireless network from an access point controller and down to the client itself. So I'm glad to be here to talk to you about that. Let's dive in. Yeah. And here we're going to look at the dashboard. In the start of the day, we're able to see high level and drill down into all the various sites across the world, right? And here we can see the different sites by color schemes and be able to see what's more problematic and we can drill down from that. Next, we'll be able to show you from those sites, what are they made of, right? So from a site, we have 
for example, we take San Jose right. as we're here, and we're managing the Building 14, which is next door to us. My old building. Yeah, it's ours too. <laughs> and what happens is that we have four floors, and all, the, all these four floors, we have all the access points. And here you can see a really nice uh, visual look at the heat map. So you can get a good idea of the coverage of all the clients. Yeah, I love this. So if I'm maybe over here, maybe I'm not getting the right coverage or something like that, and you can see that pretty easily there. Exactly. Nice. We can hover over this. We can see who is it talking to, what are the neighbors is seeing, mm -hmm. and how much coverage they get. I think wireless admins are going to love that. I, I know. And from there, they can actually look at specifically what are the problem access points. So if we're looking at the wireless network, and we can be able to drill down and look at, for example, some of these access points might have issues. So we would be able to have Assurance bring up all the problem devices, these access points, for example, and we'll be able to look at this particular access point over a period of time. That's awesome. So even if I had a problem yesterday at 3 p.m., you'd be able to go look at that, see what the problem was. Right. And you can see there's ups and downs, right? Yep. And it gives you an idea when those are. And we can actually drill down to them and look at, in a historical sense, what are these trends? And yeah, the trending analysis being really important there too. So you can do for the last seven days, every day at 2 p.m. Exactly. And that something's happening. Exactly, right? right? I mean, we can have, uh, for example, over lunchtime, somebody might be firing up their microwave ovens and things like that. Right? Good point. Right? And then cause a lot of interference for wireless, and we would be able to have assurance provide very good insights. Yeah, that. Rob's downloading his Netflix movie, it's taking <laughs> everyone's bandwidth. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so with that, we can drill down to, from the network health, we can go right into the client health itself, right? So we here, we can look at this particular building while we're getting a lot of clients. Mm -hmm. I mean, assurance is able to do this across the, all the different sites and be able to correlate them and give us an idea of what are the problem devices. That's awesome because I imagine, you know, it's telling you the problem devices, but whether you're running some sort of, you know, enterprise or maybe it's a conference level thing, you know, where there's a lot of high density uh, networks going on, that could be really helpful. Absolutely. High density is a great example because, for example, we have, you know, um, how long it would take if we're such so many clients are in one space, um, how long the onboarding times would be. A lot of them might be connected. But you know, at the same time, they may not get an IP address. Mm -hmm. And you and I know that a lot of people don't know whether or not IP it's address. It's the wireless. May... Exactly, it's the wireless. It's always the wireless that's a problem, right? right? So this is a really useful tool for that. And same, same with the network devices. We have clients, problem clients get bubbled up and gives us a very quick view into what's wrong with each of the devices. So yeah, for a network device, if it's an access point or something, yeah. that, that's a higher priority too. But if someone just doesn't remember their password, well, maybe yeah. that's not as that's important, right? right? right. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Robbins, right? I mean, maybe, maybe check that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, let's find out. For example, we have a, a client, a, a user call us, right? We we'll search for a particular user that calls us. I have a problem. I can't get on Jabber. I can't get on Wi-Fi. I'm in this particular area. So we'll search for this user. And this is nice because we also provide not only a device 360, but a client 360. Mm -hmm. So we can actually get an in-depth view into what the client issues are. That's awesome. So here we're taking a look at Rashid, who's carrying multiple devices here because he's very productive. Right. You know? And uh, for <laughs> the example, the more devices, the more productivity. Absolutely, is that, yeah, yeah okay. that's how we. Right. <laughs> and from here, we can look at over time again. This is sort of the unique theme of all the historical view into the client performance. And he has multiple different devices consolidated in a single view. We can look at multiple different ones like iPhone, Windows machine. We talked about iOS devices. Mm -hmm. right? I, I noticed the, a few Apple devices are iOS devices. Yeah. Um, yeah. What can we do around that? Because I know there's a partnership between Apple and Cisco. Right. And this is very special to uh, and unique to mm -hmm. Cisco is that we have Apple Analytics. And that gives us, uh, for example, you can imagine we have a way to have the device talk to the network. So we have two-way perspective, very in-depth, specific issues that are reporting from the device itself. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So here, Lauren, we can see that, for example, this particular device is an iPhone. But it's not only a iPhone, it's iPhone 7. So it could be iPhone 8, iPhone 10. Um, from there, we also have the operating system. And what's good about that is because over time, we may figure out that per perhaps you know, OS update, a firmware update, may affect the network in one way or another. So having this 
is very useful. Right, all comes back to analytics. If everyone else is running 11.2.1 or whatever, um, and that's the problem child, then we know. Yes. That's great. And take a look at the iOS analytics, other iOS analytics. Here we can see those events that we talked about. Um, for example, you know, it could be AAA, radius user authentication credentials, or perhaps it's just someone turned off Wi-Fi for airplane mode, yeah. those type of things. So we're able to get that reported from the iOS device itself. And on top of that, we get the neighbor list. So it has an intelligence to report what are the nearby APs mm -hmm. and be able to have that list that's optimized so that they can move around and roam. So what are you using to collect all of this information then? We're using just the network infrastructure okay. that, that you already own. Mm -hmm. right? and, and other sensors, or what, what, what else is happening there? That's a there? good point. Uh -huh. So, Lauren, you talk about the sensor. So we're going to go into proactive insights. And this is an example of the 1800 sensor that we have. Okay. And it's so, so small. You can pretty much plug it anywhere on a table yeah. and have that floor view as if it's a client perspective, right? Moving to sensor management, we can do that. We can use these sensors, or we can use the existing APs in your network by intelligently turning them into a sensor or one of the radios that are not being utilized, and that can also serve as a sensor while serving data itself. That flexible radio, yeah. FRA, right? And, and it's very unique mm -hmm. to Cisco as well. We're, mm -hmm. we're great to be leading that. And so, for example, these tests that we set up for sensor, we can have various different performance indicator tests, synthetically tests, for example, how they're getting on the wireless network, how they're able to onboard themselves and how long it takes, as well as doing radius tests, okay. reachability, mail tests, as you can see here, web server tests, a lot of different tests, and we can explore that here. But for example, we can see why is this failing and also look at specific time sequence of what are these failures mean. So for example, here you have DHCP IP addresses slow, and that would be able to be given to us by the proactive insights with sensor. So when someone billions the wireless, we could say, nope, it's the server guy, that the DHCP server is right, wrong. Right. All right. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Paul. That was Thank fantastic. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Assurance for wireless, only on Cisco's DNA Center. Big thanks to everyone for watching.